Immersing the player in realistic environments may be the first application most people think of when introduced to VR. But if you're looking to see what can be done in a more abstract space, you should definitely check out CS. It was the winner of the 2013 VR Game Jam and is currently being developed into a full game under the title Darknet. In CS, you take on the role of a hacker and delve into an 80s inspired imagining of cyberspace. You break into secured networks, earning money as you go to allow you to purchase enough tools to access the data that your employer once retrieved. The networks are depicted as a series of connected spherical nodes that can be entered. The value of each node can be guessed at by observing the volume of high value data that they transmit to neighbouring nodes. Normal data is depicted as white and valuable data as yellow. Selecting a node whooshes you into it and presents you with its security systems. These are represented as blue squares with shields in the centre that bounce around a two dimensional grid. You aim at a security square by looking and can fire a hack at it, transforming it red and causing it to increase in size to try to take over the node. Other security squares will immediately move to intercept a growing hack. While touching, they both decrease in size until either the hack or the security system is eliminated entirely. This means that on smaller nodes with the security rating of 2, you'll need to time your hack so that it is able to grow to a sufficient size before the other security system can eliminate it. On better defended nodes, you'll need to use multiple hacks wisely to confuse the defenders. This core mechanic definitely has some legs and could certainly be turned into a solid puzzle game, VR or otherwise. But currently, the difficulty curve in CS is a little unsatisfying and this is due mostly to the strategic layer. With the earnings you get from hacking low-level systems, you can buy more hacks or viruses. Each hack allows you to take over another security square when you try to break into a node. Viruses can be deployed on any already hacked node to take control of all nodes that are unprotected by firewalls and connected to it. The problem is the pricing of additional hacks. Buying one extra hack guarantees you the ability to take control of level 2 systems, it makes accessing level 3 systems trivial and level 4 systems quite achievable. Each new hack you gain pretty much entirely obsoletes the challenge and strategy of a lot of levels. The quantity of nodes available to you that you can definitely or easily beat is usually sufficient to earn you enough to buy the next hack. The price of additional hacks doubles with each one you buy, but this is not enough to allow the difficulty to keep pace with your increased resources. You are being timed, so this does act as some incentive to try to challenge yourself. But this is undermined by the simple fact that quickly beating easy, less profitable levels can still be more time efficient than repeatedly failing at a lucrative one. Ultimately, this does mean that it is far too easy to brute force your way through by farming nodes that are now almost impossible to fail at until you have so many hacks that you can't lose. CS never really challenges you to abandon this first order optimal strategy. The viruses do add a nice area control layer onto the strategic level. Blue nodes protect adjacent ones with their firewalls, so you need to take these out to leave contiguous networks of unprotected nodes for your virus to compromise in one go. The trouble is that these blue nodes are usually only capturable once you have three or four hacks at your disposal, and by this time the money to be gained from using a virus is often inconsequential. This all may sound quite negative, but it is only possible to go into this much depth because there is a solid game to critique here. It's really just the economy that's marring what is otherwise a potentially quite addicting puzzle game. The fact that all the hacks that you've acquired reset when you move on to the next network suggests that McNeil is aware that this is an issue with the current progression design. Hopefully this will improve for Darknet. 
As a VR experience, CS has a lot of nice touches. Being surrounded by this vast network is cool enough, but it's particularly impressive when you're inside any given node and can look around at the network from within. You see all the other nodes as well as the data moving between them from this new perspective. Other effects like travelling through the portals to new networks and the 3D grid that expands around you work really well. It's fair to say that the core hacking game does not require VR and could conceivably be transposed onto other platforms, but it does work well on the Rift, and overall the experience of inhabiting this stylized cyberspace is absorbing. CS will entertain you for the better part of an hour. It is very well presented and acts as a strong proof of concept. Some additional complexity and variety to the security systems would probably go a long way to mitigating some of the problems highlighted in this review. It would be good to see perhaps different types of systems move and behave differently, or even have some nodes limit the amount of hacks that you're able to use at once. There are lots of options for rebalancing the economy. This is just the sort of thing that the developer wouldn't have had time to properly iterate upon in a Games Jam competition. So CS should not reflect negatively on Darknet in this regard. CS is absorbing and provides something quite different from the vast majority of Oculus demos. You may not want to play it over and over again, but you should definitely try it out. If CS interests you, then look for the link below to check out our preview of the upcoming full game Darknet. And of course, if you've enjoyed this review, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit virtualrealityreviewer.com for more VR news and reviews.